بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم جنرمن آئی ویلکم یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی ٹو آف دس سیریز ویل ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس وی آر میٹنگ آفٹر دا ویک اینڈ بریک اینڈ آئی ڈو ہوپ دیٹ یو مسٹ ہیو ہیڈ اے پیس فل اینڈ انجوائبل ویک اینڈ ود یور فیملی اینڈ فرینڈس ایز فار ایز ٹوڈیز لیکچر از کنسرنڈ اٹ از اے کنٹینیویشن آف دا پریویس لیکچر If you recall to your memory, we did start poem number six in the previous lecture, but we could not finish it. Therefore, our today's lecture comprises of the reference, context and explanation along with the short questions and the exercise. Uh, let me tell you right from the onset that this is a first real important poem in your syllabus. in one way or the other it has got to be there in your exams so you must pay attention and not only write this poem in your english registers but you also need to memorize and learn the reference context and explanation so without wasting any time let's get started with the real business at hand i hope you are ready Well, dear students, this is the second slide of our today's lecture, which carries reference, context, ec and explanation of extract number one of the poem. Well, there are only two extracts the poem comprises of, and both of them are equally important for examination's point of view. Therefore, I would request you, please. to write it down and also memorize all these three things shared with you in this slide first have a look at the reference these lines have been taken from the poem a sindhi women written by john stellworthy i am repeating myself that you have got to write the reference the way it is being written here and shared with you in this slide you have to write a complete sentence giving the name of the poem as well as the name of the poet so let me repeat these lines have been taken from the poem a sindhi women written by john stellworthy context the poem is all in praise and appreciation of the graceful manner with which the poor women walks under a heavy weight through the streets of the karachi slums Despite so many obstacles on her way she continues to walk so impressively that the poet reaches an apt conclusion that the people who learn to walk under a heavy weight they stand straight both physically as well as morally Well students let me remind you once more that context must contain the backdrop of the entire poem and it must give the examiner the main theme of the poem so therefore in the first sentence i have tried to sum up the whole atmosphere of the poem and then in the second sentence i have given you the main idea of the poem now we move on to explanation explanation carries three marks in explanation you have to confine yourself only to the given lines you mm, should not stretch it too far explanation in these lines comma the poet is all praise and appreciation of the impressive gate you must look at the spelling of the gate g a i t gate it means walking style chalne ke andaaz ko gate kehte hain i repeat in these lines comma the poet is all praise and appreciation of the impressive gait of the poor sindhi women she is barefooted and carrying a heavy stone jar on her head comma but she carries on with her walk ever so gracefully like rhythmical waves in the sea her head cloth is blown away but by the wind comma but she glides elegantly without any disturbance in her graceful walk 
The poet seems to have taken a great liking to her walk and lost himself completely to its elegance and poise. I repeat it once more, please. In these lines, comma, the poet is all praise and appreciation of the impressive gait of the poor Sindhi women. Full stop. She is barefooted and carrying a heavy stone jar on her head. Comma. But she carries on with her walk ever so gracefully like rhythmical waves in the sea. Her head cloth is blown away by the wind. Comma, but she glides elegantly without any disturbance in her graceful walk. Full stop. The poet seems to have taken a great liking to her walk and lost himself completely to its elegance and poise. And dear students, this slide carries reference context and explanation of the second extract of the poem. Well, let me remind you that reference and context are only written once. They are not repeated because they don't change. Both the things have got to be the same because आपको ये पता है कि reference किसी भी line का लिखना हो तो वो poem का नाम भी वही रहता है और poet का नाम भी वही रहता है चाहे उसमें से कोई भी line ले ली जाए इसलिए reference को repeat करने की जरूरत नहीं होती इसी तरह जो पोएम का बैकड्रॉप होता है या मेन आइडिया होता है वो भी वही रहता है उसको भी रिपीट करने की जरूरत नहीं होती सिर्फ एक्सप्लेनेशन वेरी करती है वो भी इस वजह से कि वो एक्सप्लेनेशन हमने सिर्फ गिवन लाइंस की करनी होती हैं और उसके उसको हम अननेसेसरीली ड्रैग नहीं कर सकते स्ट्रेच नहीं कर सकते वहाँ पर हमने सिर्फ अपने आप को महदूद रखना होता है गिवन लाइन्स तक उन लाइन्स की एक्सप्लेनेशन करनी होती है इसलिए यहाँ पर ज़रूरत नहीं थी लेकिन फिर भी आपकी आसानी के लिए ताकि आपको कोई कन्फ्यूजन ना हो मैंने एक दो फिर रेफरेंस और कॉन्टेक्स्ट लिख दिया है आपसे रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप प्लीज़ इसको अपनी इंग्लिश की कॉपीज़ में लिखें और याद भी करें एनी हो दीज लाइन्स हैव बिन टेकन फ्राम द पोएम आ सिंधी विमेन रिटन बाय जॉन स्टेलवर्दी कॉन्टेक्सट द पोएम इज all in praise and appreciation of the graceful manner with which the poor woman walks under a heavy weight through the streets of the Karachi slums despite so many obstacles on her way comma she continues to walk so impressively that the poet reaches an apt conclusion that the people who learn to walk under a heavy weight they stand straight both physically as well as morally no this explanation is extremely important particularly the last three line of uh, this extract are very very important they contain the main idea of the poem in these lines comma the poet describes the obstacles that the woman has to confront while she is on her way through the shabby bazaars of the karachi slums full stop there are stones heaps of stinking rubbish comma animal waste and pieces of glass all the way through comma but all these hurdles fail to lower her spirits and she ignores them completely the poet while standing at one corner of the street with her bent back watches her cross the bazaar straight and upright and draws a very apt conclusion that the people who learn to walk beneath a heavy weight comma they always stand straight and upright comma both physically as well as morally ye ye jo last three lines hain yehi poem ka main idea hai yehi iska main question bhi hai yehi iski theme bhi hai to ye aapne har hal mein yaad karna bhi hai aur likhna bhi hai anyhow i'm going to repeat the explanation once more in these lines comma the poet describes the obstacles that the woman has to confront while she is on her way through the shabby bazaars of the karachi slums full stop there are stones heaps of stinking rubbish animal waste and pieces of glass pieces of glass all the way through comma but all these hurdles fail to lower her spirits and she ignores them completely full stop 
the poet while standing at one corner of the street with her bent back watches her cross the bazaar straight and upright and draws a very apt conclusion that people who learn to walk beneath a heavy weight they always stand straight and upright both physically as well as morally dear students ye dono extracts ki aapne reference context aur explanation ko dekha aur suna आपसे रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप प्लीज़ इसको कॉपी में भी लिखें और याद भी करें दिस इज़ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोइम एंड आ शॉर्ट वन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड व्हिच विल कैरी द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द पोइम डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस स्लाइड कैरीज द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ द पोइम द फर्स्ट टू क्वेश्चन आर नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर वेरी ईजी as well so you can do them on your own in english book you don't need to do it in your copies question number 3 4 5 6 and 6 will be discussed in the following slide here we are only going to discuss question number 7 and 8 question number 7 choose the correct answer the woman in the poem was passing through the market bazaar crowd street option number 2 is correct was passing through the bazaar b she was carrying a bundle of sticks a stone jar a bundle of books or nothing well she was carrying a stone jar option 2 is correct c those who carry weight stand straight bend idle fall option 1 is correct they stand straight d her walk was smooth difficult slow fast option 1 again is correct her walk was smooth question number 8 mark the statements true or false she was barefooted yes uh, this statement is true statement number 2 she had a stone jar on her head again this is a true statement statement number 3 she was a baluchi woman absolutely wrong she was a sindhi woman as is clear from the title of the poem she did not have a ripple in her walk ripple kehte hain disturbance ko irritation ko annoyance ko yes this is absolutely true she did not have a ripple on her walk she did not find any disturbance in her walking style so this statement is true well students this is the last slide of our today's lecture as you can see it carries the short answers from the poem a sindhi woman all the four questions given here in the slide are very very important please note them down with your with their questions in your neat english registers well the first question is what does the poet reflect to watch uh, the women pass through the bazaar this question actually is about the main idea of the poem or the essence of the poem ke poet jab wo saurat ko bazaar mein se guzarte hue dekhta hai to kya sochta hai jo wo sochta hai yahi iski पोएम की थीम है वो हमें इसमें बयान करना होगी टू वॉच द वेमेन पास थ्रू द बजार द पोइट रिफ्लेक्ट दैट द पीपल हु लर्न टू वॉक बिनीथ अ हैवी वेट दे स्टैंड स्ट्रेट एंड अपराइट बोथ फिजिकली एज वेल एज मॉरली मैं आपके लिए दोबारा दोहरा रहा हूँ इसको टू वॉच द वेमेन पास थ्रू द बजार द पोइट रिफ्लेक्ट दैट द पीपल हु लर्न टू वॉक बिनीथ अ हैवी वेट they stand straight and upright both physically as well as morally question number 2 what is the main idea of the poem ye uski theme ke bare mein question hai idea ke bare mein question hai pehla question bhi yahi tha ab usne straight open plain words mein pooch liya hai to hum usi answer ko yahan par bhi likh sakte hain but maine thoda usko mein variation de di hai the main idea of the poem is that work brings us self respect and dignity के काम करने में हमारी इज्जत नफ्स और हमारी 
خوش خودداری یا شان و شوکت میں کوئی فرق نہیں پڑتا بلکہ وہ ہمارے کام کرنے سے بڑھتے ہیں دا پیپل ہو لرن ٹو اسٹینڈ اپ رائٹ انڈر اے ہیوی لوڈ دیئر سیلف رسپیکٹ از انہانسڈ اینڈ دے آر اپ رائٹ بوتھ فزیکلی ایز ویل ایز مورلی آپ نے غور کیا ہوگا کہ اس میں اس کا جو مورل آسپیکٹ ہے وہ بھی آ گیا اور جو اس کا پوئم کا آسپیکٹ ہے وہ بھی آ گیا لٹرل اور مورل دونوں آسپیکٹ اس میں ڈسکس ہو گئے دا مین آئیڈیا آف دا پوئم از دیٹ ورک برنگس اے سیلف رسپیکٹ اینڈ ڈگنیٹی دا پیپل ہو لرن ٹو اسٹینڈ اپ رائٹ انڈر اے ہیوی لوڈ دیئر سیلف رسپیکٹ از انہانسڈ اینڈ دے آر اپ رائٹ بوتھ فزیکلی ایز ویل ایز مورلی اخلاقی طور پر بھی وہ اپ رائٹ ہوتے ہیں اور فزیکل پاسچرنگ جو ہوتی ہے ان کی جو پاسچر ہوتا ہے وہ بھی اپ رائٹ ہوتا ہے اسٹریٹ ہوتا ہے نمبر تھری واٹ پکچر آف دا کراچی اسلامس ڈو وی گیٹ فرام دا پوئم پوئم کو پڑھنے سے ہمیں کراچی کی جو کچی بستیاں ہیں ان کے بارے میں کیا تصویر کشی ہوتی ہے ہمارے ذہن میں منظر کشی ہوتی ہے ہمارے ذہن میں وی گیٹ اے ویری ڈرٹی پکچر آف دا اسلامز آف کراچی آفٹر ریڈنگ دا پوئم وی گیٹ اے ویری ڈرٹی پکچر آف دا اسلامز آف کراچی آفٹر ریڈنگ دا پوئم دا سینیٹری کنڈیشنز آر ویری پور دیر آر ہیپس آف ربش پیسز آف گلاس اینڈ اینیمل ویسٹ آر ٹو بی فاؤنڈ ایوری ویئر دا کنڈیشنز آر ان ہائجینک اینڈ ناٹ ورتھ لیونگ ایٹ آل آئی ریپیٹ وی گیٹ اے ویری ڈرٹی پکچر آف دا اسلامز آف کراچی آفٹر ریڈنگ دا پوئم دا سینیٹری کنڈیشنز آر ویری پور دیر آر ہیپس آف ربش پیسز آف گلاس اینڈ اینیمل ویسٹ آر ٹو بی فاؤنڈ ایوری ویئر دا کنڈیشنز آر ان ہائجینک اینڈ ناٹ ورتھ لیونگ کوشچن نمبر فور ہاؤ ڈز دا ویمن پاس تھرو دا بازار عورت کس طرح سے گزرتی ہے اس کا مینرزم جو ہے وہ آپ نے بتانا ہے اس کے آنسر میں شی پاس تھرو دا بازار ان این امپریسو اینڈ گریس فل مینر شی واکس ایز ایف شی گلائڈس اینڈ سویز لائک اے برڈ ان دا ایئر دو شی از کیرئنگ اے اسٹون جار آن ہر ہیڈ یٹ دیر از نو ڈسٹربنس ان ہر واکنگ اسٹائل ایٹ آل آئی ریپیٹ She passes through the bazaar in an impressive and graceful manner. She walks as if she glides and sways like a bird in the air. Though she is carrying a stone jar on her head, yet there is no disturbance in her walking style at all. Well, dear students, this was our lecture number 32. I wish you all the very best. Please take very good care of yourself. Khuda Hafiz.